this video, I'm going to show you how to use the PS exec command to execute remote commands and processes on remote computers. Uh, this is uh, very useful when you need to troubleshoot a remote computer, uh, get some information, copy files. You can even install software with this with this utility. Uh, it just comes in uh, very handy to uh, remote troubleshoot computers. Um, so the first thing is by default it's going to be blocked on computer computers if the Windows firewall is enabled. Uh, you need to have ports uh, TCP 445 and UDP port 137 open on the remote computers uh, because again the Windows firewall will block it. So I'm going to show you how to uh, create a group policy to push that out to all computers so this command will work. So first I'll walk through the group policy and then I'll walk through uh, several examples of how to use the PSEC uh, exec command. So let me jump over to group policy and I'm gonna create a new group policy and link it to my computer's OU. I'll just call this PS exec allow. And I'll also show you how to secure PS exec uh, it's because it can be used by um, hackers malicious actors viruses can include it so you want to make sure you have you secure the use of PX, PS exec and that it can be secured multiple ways I'm going to show you how to do that with the Windows firewall because again it's very important that you only allow authorized computers to execute uh, commands on remote computers and you want to block it for unauthorized computers so uh, create a group policy. Now I need to go uh, create a firewall rule to open port 445, 445 and UDP 137. So that's under computer configuration, Windows settings, security settings. And then the Windows Defender Firewall. And I'm going to create a new inbound rule. I'm going to do new rule. I'm going to do a port. And then I'm going to do TCP. And it's going to be port 445. I'm going to allow the connection. And I want this just for my domain profile. And I will name it TCP 445. You can name it whatever you want. You can give it a description. And then what you want to do is come back into this rule and go to the scope. And then I want to limit this to my authorized computers. So maybe my laptop or the help desks. Uh, IP range. Um, so I'm going to be coming from 192.168.100.10. So let me bring this back over here. So for example, my authorized computer will have the IP 192.168.100.10, and uh, the remote computer, once it's updated with its firewall setting, it will allow connections on that port from that IP address. Any other IP address will be blocked. So this is one easy way that we can secure the use of uh, PS exec. So I'll hit OK, apply, and now I'm going to do the same thing for uh, port 137. New rule. It's going to be a port. And this will be UDP. 137, allow the connection. Again, I want this just on my domain profile. I will call this UDP 137. Again, I'm going to come in here and only allow it to run or accept these connections from 192.168.100.10. And you can put in subnet, a whole subnet, a range, put a range in here. Okay, so before I run up uh, the, the GP update on the remote computer, 
So I'll try to run PSExec and you'll see that it's not going to connect. Um, but before I do that, you'll need to download, and I'll put this in the, the description notes, but it's also on my website. Uh, you'll need to go to this link here and download PS Tools. This is what has the PSX command in it. It's a Microsoft utility. So <clears throat> you can just extract this and then I like to just extract it and put it into a folder called uh, let me jump over to my other computer where it's installed I put it into a folder called PS Tools and then you see it's got all of the PS Tools in it and PSEC, PS Exec command is listed in here um, you can also put it you can also put this executable into one of your Windows uh, paths, such as uh, C Windows System 32. Uh, that allows you to run the the command from any path in uh, the command prompt. You don't have to change to the directory, but uh, I, I'm gonna <clears throat> just change to the directory. So if I open up the command prompt. And wherever I've downloaded PS Tools, I need to change to that directory. So it's, uh, it's in the root of C, PS Tools, and then if, if I do a, a list of the directory, all of the PS Tools are here. So now I can just run PS Exec, and then the syntax is PS Exec, and then backslash backslash the computer. You can do the host name or IP. I'm going to run commands on uh, PC1 and then whatever your command is. So I'll just start with hostname, but again, it's, it's not gonna work until I go run uh, a GP update to pull down the firewall rules, because it's the firewall is blocking it right now. So let me jump over to PC1. So I'm on the real computer, and you can see it doesn't have the firewall rules turned on to allow PSXX. So I've got the group policy created. Now I'll just come on this computer and do a GP update force. And then I'll refresh the firewall and you'll see that the firewall uh, rules have been updated to allow 445 and 137. So if I come over here, refresh, there you can see 445, 137 have been added to the firewall rules. You can see it's got the remote IP address. So this computer is only going to allow uh, connections to 445 and 137 from this IP address. So let me jump back over to this computer. So, okay, so here's the computer with, <clears throat> with the dot 10 address. Now, if I run PS exec, <clears throat> I'll just do a hostname lookup on the remote computer. So I'm executing, I'm running PS exec, it's going to execute uh, the host name command on PC1. And I'm going to show you, it's going to run very slow, and, there, and it's this is another firewall uh, problem. It will run, it's just going to run very slow. And this is a common, common issue with PS Exec, and you have to go enable um, another. So they're 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 finished. Uh, came back with PC one, and it's gonna it's gonna go execute the command on the remote computer, and it's gonna display uh, the results back on this console on the on my local computer. So like I said, that was very slow. So with the firewall enabled, you also need to have uh, remote service management open um, or the PSEC exec command runs very slow as you just saw so I'll go enable this and I'll show you that so I'll just add another new rule and I'll do predefine this time and select remote service management remote service management next and 
next I'm gonna allow the connection so <clears throat> I'll come back in here and do the same thing I only want this to run from uh, to secure this from this uh, my local from the dot 10 address so I'll go do that um, and then I'll run a GP update again and then I'll run the PSX at Press exec command and you'll see how much faster it runs. Okay, so now I've got uh, remote service management uh, enabled in the firewall. So <clears throat> let me go run PSX, PS exec command again and you'll see how much faster it runs with that enabled in the firewall. I mean, it's almost instant compared to like a 10 15 second delay uh, without those rules in the firewall. So now that everything's set up, let me just, uh, I'll run through several examples. So again, make sure you um, go download PS Tools. I'll include a link in the description and then just uh, put that folder somewhere on your computer. I've put mine in the root of C into PS Tools and then open up the command prompt um, and change to the, to the directory where you have the PS Tools and then you can just run PSX uh, exec from there. So um, again, to run to run commands, you just do PS exec and then slash backslash backslash and then the host name. And you can do multiple host names, separate them by a common comma. So I'll do PC one, and then I'll do another server, and then I will run the host name command. You can see that executed on both computers. It brought back PC1 and the host name SRV-VM1. Um, say I want to get the, uh, the network adapter information from both of these computers. I'll just run ipconfig, and you'll see ipconfig will run on both computers and bring back the IP information. So there's there's the IP address information for PC1, here's the IP address information for um, SRV-VM1. So you can really just run whatever commands um, that you want. You can you can open up a command prompt. So now it's it's like I'm on that computer. So now I can just type in commands without having to type psexec because I've opened up. Uh, the command prompt session to that computer. Um, IP config. Um, who am I? This will show who's logged on to that computer. Uh, system info. Hopefully, if I type the command correctly. So, again, this is pulling all the information. Uh, from the remote computer, like on uh, directly on the computer. This is just the system info commands, bringing back all the uh, host name and stuff. So, you know, if I'm troubleshooting the computer and I wanted to know uh, what the remote computer's, uh, what, what OS version it's running, I can do psexec, run the system info command, and here I get the OS version information and a bunch of other information, process information, BIOS information, all kinds of stuff. Restart it.
So here on the left, I've got the remote computer, and on the right is the my local computer. So I'm going to delete uh, this passwords file on the remote computer. So I'll just do ps exec, uh, the computer, uh, the command prompt, and dash c, uh, wrong command, hold on. Okay, so I'll do the command prompt, and then I'm going to do a delete, and then the path to the text file. Uh, passwords.txt. Okay, let me try this again. I had the file name wrong. All right, so there you saw on the left side the passwords file deleted. So uh, one thing to, to keep note is, um, so on the remote computer, PSX, it, wor it works by copying <clears throat> uh, the EXE to the remote computer. So you can see here in the Windows path, uh, while PSX is it running, it's got the, the EXE over there. So if I do a control C to get out of it, you'll see that it, it deletes itself. But if you just closed and didn't exit out of the command, uh, PS exec is going to continue to run on the remote computer, which could be an issue, but not, not uh, as big of an issue if you secure the use of it with the Windows firewall or some other uh, security control on the remote computers. So that's it. Um, I've got several more examples um, of how to use PS Exec. Um, it's really easy to use. Again, you just do the command, the computer, and then whatever command you want to run on the remote computer. Um, you can pass um, credentials if you're coming from a different security context. Maybe you're on a domain computer and you're wanting to execute commands on a local computer. You can specify a username and password. Um, I've got some examples of killing a process, installing software, uh, restarting real computers. Um, but again, it's it's very easy, um, and that's.